So we are joined from Houston, Texas, by the founder of Reimagine Hospitality, Lauren Brown, a third generation hospitality expert. She's worked everywhere from restaurants to hotels, you name it. She has been all over the place. And we're recording this for our friends at Rosa Scott. Ridgeland High School, Germantown High School, and for our YouTube channel. And I've got a room full here with me at Velma Jackson High School. And we're talking about the hospitality and tourism career cluster, which you are really doing some big things in out there in Houston um, and can tell us a lot more about it. I actually have 11 years in the restaurant industry myself. Uh, <laughs> a little bit of that was full time, but most of that was part time. But I was, especially in a place like Mississippi, I was telling the students there is a lot of money to be made in this industry. And this industry is not going away, especially in the big tourism areas. So I'll let you tell us about how you got into this because you've been in it your whole <laughs> life. And then we'll talk a Pretty little much. bit about what goes on uh, in some of these places that we see all the time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. Um, I'm just, I, I'm just speechless. Like, I just want to say thank you. I'm getting a little nervous, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> Um, so this is the closest I've came to coming to Mississippi. My mom's family is from Louisiana, so I'm happy to at least be in Mississippi virtually, at least. Um, so how I got into hospitality, you know, as you mentioned, is like, I'm third generation hospitality. My parents met working at Higher Regency downtown Houston. You know, it was a cute story. My mom was a waitress with a little sassy attitude. My dad was a sweet cook. <laughs> and uh, they're no longer together. But, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that, you know, I saw my parents work really, really hard. And my dad, you know, growing up, he, you know, he grew up in kind of, in, in scarcity compared to how I've grown up. And it was to the point where he, he was like, you know what, what can I do when I grow up where I know that I could feed my family? And that's how he thought of becoming a chef where he knew he would never starve or him and his family would never starve. And so it wasn't really out of he, passion. It was a little bit of mix of that. He's fantastic at what he does, but it was also out of necessity of how he got into the industry. And so for me, um, being you know behind the scenes in the back of hotels growing up and not only that my mom her twin sister my aunt Lola she worked for Connell Airlines which is now known as United so family vacations were sweet growing up because my mom had the Hyatt hookup with the hotel and her wow. twin sister had the airline hookup and once once I started growing up me and my aunt we were a match made in heaven when it came to traveling <laughs> Yeah, and Ashley, right before you came on, I was just talking about even if you just want to work part time for these hospitality companies, people use it just for the discount, and those discounts are sweet. Yeah, yeah, you get discounts even if you get discounts as an employee, even by just even working part time. But another factor, uh, Mr. Pygot, was when when I was in high school, a junior in high school, one of my classmates in my homeroom class, she was an upperclassman, she was like, Lauren you got to do hotel management. Like it is so much fun. It's a hotel management internship. It's so much fun. And without even knowing, she recruited me to do hotel management. We had a little group interview. I got in and it was two class, it was two class periods. And I was able to work at a hotel it was an internship, but it also it counted as a gym credit. So I got out of phys ed <laughs> This is manual labor. Yeah. And that's, and we had different rotations of housekeeping, purchasing, all the little different departments of the hotel. And when I got into the kitchen, I realized a greater appreciation of what my dad does every day as a chef, because I'm like, wait a minute, they don't, they don't get to sit down around here. <laughs> like you got to keep chopping it up. You got to stay cooking, got to be on your feet. And so I grew a greater appreciation of what my dad does every single day at that time. He's retired now from culinary, but I definitely grew a greater appreciation. Yeah. And, and that's one thing, you know, Mississippi actually has one of the, uh, of the top, top destinations for hospitality jobs in the country with our casino industry. And we also have a university here which offers a BS in culinary arts. Um, and then also at University of Southern Mississippi, we have a hospitality management program where they train people to work in management positions at these casino hotels on the coast and in the Tunica area near Memphis. So you said that, you know, you worked in all these areas um, because I think a big misnomer in this industry is that 
oh, uh, they have a place to stay. They can run a hotel. Or, yeah, you can cook a little bit. You need to open a restaurant. There's so much more to it than that. It is completely customer-driven. It is uh, completely based on the availability of when your customers are going to be there, not your usual mm-hmm. one to five. And then there's a lot of business. Um, uh, there's a lot of business that involved in it. There's a lot of uh health related things involved in it because mm. you know, people's health as far as their comfort and uh, and what they're ingesting is extremely important and mm-hmm. uh, and you got to be able to manage people so um we'll <laughs> yeah, it's definitely about, a people business uh, <laughs> how, how all that comes in together uh, in the hospitality industry because I think you know I got 14 15 year olds with me now I don't think they realize all how all that goes together yeah it's definitely a lot and I don't know why I'm just I love my dad so much um, talking about him, but he, matter of fact, when Hurricane Katrina happened, um, there was an influx of people from New Orleans that came to Houston. And my dad, I forgot which which brand he was working for at the time, but this was the largest amount of people he ever fed. And he was just thankful that no one got food poisoning. Because wow. it would have been on his watch, even though he's even though he's the executive chef and he may not have made every single meal or help assist in every single meal, he would have been held responsible if anything happened to these people consuming it. So it's so food and health and safety is so, so important. Yeah, because you because one before you before it even hits the grill or the uh, or the oven or whatever, there has to there, you have to uh, you have to buy it from a distributor. Then you, yep. have to, you have to come up with your food costs with your uh, food costs with your recipes, and then you have to prepare it correctly according to the recipe. Yeah. And then in the higher end areas, you have to have the right smell, the right presentation, the right plating. So it is um, it really has to. There's a lot that that goes in from the uh, beginning to the end when it comes to a customer experience. And that yeah, would be it, hotel as well because you don't you know the room has to be prepped, things have to be cleaned. They have to have the right type of room that could be disabled. You have to look mm-hmm. at, uh, at any special considerations for allergies, pets. Um, Come so. on, Mr. Pidot. You, you, do you, hey, if you ever change your mind with teaching, just let me know. <laughs> you already know the game. I like that. <laughs> now, uh, but yeah, not, not go ahead. Oh, no. Well, like to what you were saying, it's definitely about preparing, you know, preparing for our guests, preparing to make sure anticipating the guest needs is so important. And also just preparing, making sure that even if you are um, an engineer at the hotel, you're doing the maintenance for the hotel, making sure that the um, the fire alarms is working properly in the room, you know, the smoke detectors, as well as, you know, light bulbs, just different, you know, different things um the ac units oh my gosh at a a hotel there's so many things and that's why we have so many different departments that help if we are taking care of a building and what we call it is the house we call the hotel a house so it's pretty much you have to have the heart of the house and i think that's one thing that's very important that we need everyone because it keeps it keeps it going yeah, and in the and in the larger facilities, you got to have a good security department. I mean, there's cameras everywhere. Yep, LP loss and prevention. It's, yeah, again, it's it's back to the safety of the uh, safety of the of the uh, of the merchandise and of the guests because, um, especially when there's money being exchanged, you have to look at uh, you have to look at all that. Yes, it definitely, absolutely, and there's other things behind the scenes. I'm glad that we're we're talking about this because there's because when we go to a hotel, we normally think of you know, front desk or housekeeping. Housekeeping is more behind the scenes, but also housekeeping, our our, our staff in the back that is preparing, um, you know, the cooks and everything, also our banquet staff. So people that you, the invisible helpers that you don't see, those are the ones that make the greatest impact on property. Like, yeah. can you not? Yeah, and that's why I wanted to talk about before we get into into um, into redefine hospitality is that what are you know because some of these kids want to go to college, some of them may just want to go to community college, some of them may, may want to get into it right out of high school, and what however they choose it is fine. Um, but yeah. what are some uh, what are some different positions that they may not know about that are in these areas that they could start doing at 18, 19 years old? 
Um, the perfect way to get into hospitality is F and B, which is food and beverage. You know, being a waiter, being a server, even if it's being a dishwasher or a cook. I've heard stories of people being a dishwasher and end up going into a, becoming a general manager. What I love about my industry is one of the very few industries where your hard work can really pay off. You don't necessarily need a college education in order to succeed. I'm not advertising this or I'm not really proud to say it. But I'll confess, not a lot of people know this, but I am a three-time college dropout. I tried. I went for my mom. I went for my dad. I even went for myself. I went to school for photography. Um, so my parents was like, I'm the only child, and I'm the only horse they're betting on a race. So it's like, OK, you want to be an artist? <laughs> All right. They were supportive, but at the same time, and, and I just, how I got into actually working at my first hotel was because of my dad. Um, there was a, ho a Holiday Inn being built down the street from my house. And I said, hey, daddy, do you know anyone that worked there? My dad is like the telephone book. He's, he's, a, he's the real yellow pages. He know everybody. And he said that he knew someone, his, his best friend, Chef Andy in the industry. And I got, I don't know if they created a position for me, but I started off as a hostess at the hotel restaurant and end up becoming an assistant for manager of operations, a front desk manager. Now I'm a sales coordinator for Omni Hotels and Resorts and I'm in the sales department. And I really love it because I have a Monday through Friday, nine to five schedule. Yeah, and that's not always the case in hospitality, which is uh, again, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like other industries because yeah, you can work your way up with the experience because it's a very mm -hmm. experience based field. But at the same time, when people are gonna be spending their money is when everybody else is off work. Uh, that, before we came on, I was telling the kids when I was in the full time, full time restaurant industry, I was working 4 p.m. to midnight pretty much every night. Yeah. So I was sleeping in every day. So if that's something you want to do and you like sleeping in, <laughs> they can definitely uh, they can definitely find a spot for you. Now, some people love that and they do it and, and they do it for years. So, um, you know, it's all about what's what you want to do as far as a family or, or what that or, or what that is. So, again, it's, it's, it is very diverse in that uh, in that regard. Um and also, yeah. you know, uh, we're in a rural area and, you know, kids say all the time they want to live in these big cities. If you want to live in a big city, this is a good field to get into. Yeah. I mean, like you can really you can travel anywhere. I can with my front desk experience, I can literally be dropped at any. Most of my experience come from IHG. So that is your Holiday Inn, Crown Plaza, Hotel Indigo, Saybridge, et cetera. So you can literally drop me off at any Holiday Inn in this world or any other country. As long as they got Opera, which is our PMS system, I'm good. You can drop me off anywhere. And that's another thing. Like my husband, he's a general manager of a hotel. Ooh. And he, what, he went to college um, to UTEP. He didn't finish, um, but he got an opportunity while working at Embassy Suites from while he was in El Paso to move to Houston. And so he took the job opportunity. He stayed at the hotel, matter of fact, till he got on his feet because picture it, he's a young black man in big city, Houston, Texas, no family. And so it took him, a, no credit also, it took him a while to find an apartment you know, here in Houston, and he, his dad was like, I'm happy you got a job. His, he comes from a military family. His dad was a sergeant, okay? He's like, I'm happy you got a job, son, but you, and you have a place to stay with the hotel, but he's just, he was just kind of hesitant about it, and so my husband was like, if I don't find an apartment, because it was getting kind of tight at the hotel, they were switching his room around, he's like, if I don't find myself an apartment, I'm just going to drive all the way to Houston, El Paso was a long way. Yeah. I'm going to drive all the way back home, basically with his tail in between his legs and just going to have to face his military father. Like, yeah, dad, you were right. But thank God he was able, now it wasn't the best. I don't know how I look back in the day, but when I saw it, he took me there, <laughs> wasn't the best conditions, but he was able to make it. And now he's a general manager of, of one of the top Crown Plazas here in Houston. There's only three, so he's at a top. He works at one of the top three Crown Plazas in Houston. <laughs> and that's cool. You mentioned that too, because a lot of these hotels, if you you know, if you relocate, they can at least put you up for a little while while you're figuring it out. You're not going to have to yeah. do all that ahead. Definitely. Of um, and like and, and, and you know, I, I know I've mentioned you know here in Mississippi, the casino industry is huge, but just because you know the casino is not just gambling there are so many peripheral uh jobs oh every time i'm in below they have these signs up saying career fair every day uh two to five uh applica you know 
walk-in interview. So they're literally running an entire resort that is, uh, and, you know, there. If you want to get into the gaming industry, there is a lot of money to be made there. But that's not the not, that's not all casinos do. I have an aunt, my aunt Pam. She lives in Shreveport, and she actually worked at a hotel casino, Horseshoe. And yep. she is she's been a cocktail waitress forever, and she is used to having cash, having having tips. She knows how to talk to the guests. You know, she has her regulars also that come up in there but another component is that you don't even necessarily have to do that you can work in retail we, in my property we have a spa so wow. you can work in retail and spa you can be director of spa services if you love beauty if you love taking pe- care at the end of the day it's about taking care of people but if you love taking care of people's beauty their skin um being there for you know being available for their makeup for their big day if they're having their wedding or reception at the hotel there is so many opportunities they also take care of the cabana and the pool also of you know renting that out in the hotel so there's there's just really so many opportunities and also one thing uh mr pie guy i want to go over is it if you're interested in tech you can also work in tech and also get your employee discount as well. So we're talking software engineering, we're talking about IT, web design, Um, you can be a marketing manager as well. Um, You can also, you know, just assisting with the high speed internet and also guest room entertainment aspect and then um, digital analytics. So I just wanted to touch on that, that if you are interested in tech, Dude, you can work. You can work in the tech industry as well as being in hospitality, and get still get to have your amazing employee discount and be able to travel as well. Yeah, because when it comes to uh, because and work when, remotely. Yeah, because when it comes to reservations, <laughs> all that obviously is done on done with a, a server, and that server can't go down. You're talking about people's, uh, oh, yes. you, know, you, you know, you, you know, folks had to have shelter. And I actually had a former student who was an engineer at the Margaritaville Resort in, in, in Vicksburg, and he could literally fix anything in the property except the, uh, except the elevator. I'm, I'm sorry, except the escalator. And he was getting trained to do that. So he had all the trade so cool. in, the, uh, in the Margaritaville in the Margaritaville here in Vicksburg. I'm, I'm happy to be talking to you. I'm even learning something. That's amazing. So I just think it's important for the young people to see that it's not just the front desk people. It's not just the housekeepers. There are so many careers um in this cluster now let's talk about uh reimagine hospitality which is uh yeah. your profit uh, <laughs> and uh and you've really uh and you're really on a mission to put more minorities in management and executive roles in hospitality so uh tell us where that's going and where that came from yeah so for me you know it really spotted it started um actually in 2020 when we were in isolation and really had nothing to do um it started off with really being a consulting company. My husband, he's an excellent problem solver. He's he's a bit older than I am and he's been in the industry really double my time. And so I'm thinking, you know, he's just an excellent problem solver. Let's try and start this. But with him being a general manager, it was just really impossible, especially given his time and especially with the pandemic, he had to work even harder because he was, he was short staffed. And so really it, It's now my baby. Um, Any opportunity that I can, as far as like advocating or with people of color being being able to have executive roles or leadership, I did not know that it was less than two percent of executives in the hospitality industry that that are in those roles, and not in also hotel ownership. I want to emphasize on that as well too. You don't necessarily have to work at a hotel; you can own one. Yeah. That is possible as well. And so any any way that I, and I right now, what I do is I just create content online. You can actually follow me um, on at Reimagine Hospitality on Instagram. I post funny and relatable videos of hospitality and also just showing tips and tricks of not only hospitality, but as well as travel. Yeah, and uh, and I can tell you, you know, you are a great social media follower and somebody you know, with uh so much restaurant experience. What you put on there is so realistic and uh, and so true. Um, and but but you know at the end of the day, you know, working in a face to face role with customers, it uh, definitely has its entertaining moments. And it and even though it gets difficult sometimes, there is a lot of reward. There's a lot of rewards for you know. You know I, I, I've I've said many times in my restaurant days that it really feels good when somebody's having a big event and you help make it better. 
Um, oh, there, yeah. there, there is a, a lot of rewards from that and a lot of money to be made because a lot of people will make sure that they're tipping big to people that do a good job. Um, um, and I, you know, and we have, a, you know, we have young people here, so that, you know, they may not know how all that works, but they're, uh, I, you know, I actually, I actually changed careers at 30. I was, uh, oh, okay. staff at the university. So last year. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I wish, <laughs> I'm uh, but, I, but when I was, when I was 28, I, I quit my job on staff at the university and I started bartending full-time. That job at the university required a master's and I was working about 60, 65 hours a week. I started working 40 hours a week as a bartender at Applebee's and I was making all mm -hmm. about $10,000, $11,000 a year more working less. So there's yeah. a lot of money to be made to people that are willing to work. Now, I, I didn't want to go into it full time. I just thought to do another route, but I had the opportunity to move up into management without any management experience. Um, so there, I think it's important for um, young people to know that if you're willing to get in there and, and, and bust it, whether it be in the hotel side, the restaurant yes. side, front or back. Um, they're looking for people that will learn the industry and move them up. Uh, even though, you know, there's some great hospitality degree programs, associates mm -hmm. and bachelors. That's, um, this is a great field, you know, and again, we have, we have a great area and I know Houston's a great hospitality town with all the sports and everything going on. And then here in Mississippi with the casino industry, there is a lot of jobs and these jobs are not going away. No, that's even, even if, and I don't, if we are, if this, we can even go back to let's just talk about this when was the first hotel any idea any guesses of when there was the first hotel the first inn where people would stay back in in pre in in, in biblical days uh, you got it even they were there was not even room in the inn for jesus himself the hotel was over booked <laughs> they couldn't even accommodate jesus christ <laughs> the hotel was booked and busy so that's how long it's been going on. And yeah. so if we're talking, that was over 2000 years ago. So we're even, it's going to go, I'm not really too much concerned about Airbnb. That's, that it's, a, it's its own entity. Yeah. Um, but as far as like hospitality, hotels, these are things that are going to remain because people need a place to stay. I mean, just as I talked about earlier with Hurricane Katrina, there were people coming to stay in Houston to seek shelter and stay at hotels. Even when Hurricane Harvey happened, people lost their homes and it was very unfortunate. And people were able to, you know, seek shelter and once again, stay at hotels. So it's definitely going to be something that is going to, you know, remain in the future. And another thing is, is that hotels are actually starting to change certain things that are even become more tech friendly for the future generation of travelers which is sitting in your room right now and so that's another you know aspect of how is travel going to look you know years from now what are going to be the in-room amenities that you know guests will want I remember I've been in the industry for so long I remember it was a thing to have newspapers delivered oh, yeah. to your you know elite guests you know it was USA that USA today they'll yeah. be delete you know on you know delivered to the guest room not anymore yeah. because it's so everything with the pandemic you wanted to have things that are less hands free and not only that is so much technology you don't need it. There's some hotels that have tablets or it's right there on the television screen. So there's definitely a, a change that is being made to accommodate once again, the future guests and we're anticipating future guest needs. Yeah. And I was in Memphis a couple of weeks ago at a Hampton Inn and I did everything on my phone. It was the most unbelievable yeah. thing I've ever seen in my life. Like even the key went to the phone. Um, yeah, Hilton. Going to watch with your phone, <laughs> it was like it was really cool. But the, but that that's the trend that was going with technology. And we got a question. Yeah. And okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's do some questions. Yeah, I got I got a question about that. But all these are from ninth graders, and uh, these are really good. Uh, this first one's London Lot, and she asks, "Is it always hard being in good spirits in front of customers?" It can be, you know, especially if you have an interaction with a guest that wasn't so so pleasant. I've had guests who blew off steam on me because um, I they thought I, you know, can really take it because I'm serving them in a way. Um, <laughs> but one thing that, and sometimes they'll come back and apologize yeah. once they get their mind right. <laughs> but another thing that even when, <laughs> even when I worked with one manager, um, my husband actually, he told me to let the next guest 
um, kind of make up for it. You know, there might be another guest who's bubbly and excited to check in to the hotel and everything and feed off of that energy and don't transfer that negativity to the next guest. And I've even watched myself do that one time before in my career where I had a negative um, experience and I had another customer to check in with me and she was excited to check in and everything. And I was just like, hey, hi, here you go. I didn't really, I just wasn't in the best of spirits. And I, I, I unknowingly transferred that to her. So yes, it can definitely be challenging, but he try to keep a uh, remain, just remain having a good attitude and just let it be like waters off of a duck's back. That's it. Just move on. Absolutely. Uh, now that we talked briefly about this, but this is a uh, Kaylee Luckett. She's one of our cheerleaders here. Uh, she Ooh. asked, yeah, she asked, do you feel like technology will, uh, do you feel like technology will continue to change this? Uh, will continue to change this field? Absolutely. Um, it will, it will, I want technology to be more of a, a blessing other than a burden. Um, I don't want people to be replaced by robots, so to speak. It is a, it is a people business. We have to interact with, you know, there are kiosks where you can just check in on your own or things of that nature, but I really believe that it is definitely, once again, the heart of the house. Yep. And so it definitely want people to remain, people to keep their jobs and everything because we we do this. A robot can't make the bed. If that's the case, sign me up. <laughs> My room needs to be clean right now. <laughs> but um, I think technology is not, it's just going to help the guests stay. You know, I had stayed at a Kempton in Sacramento and they were, you know, able to text me. So I was able to text front desk and let them know like, hey, I would like to have my room clean today. I like to have extra towels. And so I really like that, um, that I can still communicate without, without having to go downstairs and pick up the phone. So if you're an introvert, that kind of works really well. But I think technology is going to be a pro rather than, rather than a con in our industry. And it's going to help streamline a lot of things. Oh, I agree. Uh, th now, this is Gerdonovan Smith, and he asked, what was your main motivation to switch from photography as a major to go full-time into hospitality? Oh, wow. I've never been asked that before. Um, I think it's because I was just working at hotels and everything, and I still, I still love photography, but I was more so an artist yeah. um, than I was and I was a professional photographer. I, I charge people for my work and photo shoots and everything, but I was more so an artist. Most of my, my noteworthy work came from when I was in Louisiana visiting my grandparents. I love shooting landscape. Um, but I've, I've learned that, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but I learned that your purpose doesn't necessarily have to be your profession. It took me a long time to realize that my purpose is in this or it had to be my profession. So um, I think more so now with being in hospitality is that there are still ways that I can be creative. My next step is to be able to be in marketing. Um, if I were to main to work on property, that way I can market or advertise the hotel as the destination itself. Like you may be coming to Cancun, but I'm advertising the resort as the destination by doing photography or photo shoots and so I believe that my gifts and talents is going to be able to open that door for me it just it's just a matter of when yeah and I'm glad you mentioned that because we're actually having a marketing person Thursday so that's a good segue uh now this is a great question here uh and I, and I mentioned this before we can't we came online but I'm glad it's being asked this is Aiden Owens and he asked when you first started in hospitality and if someone else was starting in hospitality, how would that make that? What other skills would they gain to go into other careers? Oh my gosh, there is so many transferable skills. And just talking about starting, I actually have a coworker of mine, him and I, we were both um, front desk agents and now he's a general manager of a Hampton Inn and I'm so proud of him. But one of the transferable skills is customer service. No matter what business you go into, you're going to have to serve a customer. Absolutely. So, so one of them is customer service. Also with me working in front desk, I had to be able to answer phones at a high volume, um, you know, attention to detail. I think it's more so of soft skills more than anything. And the other factor is just, 
being, you know, being hospitable and people, but there's definitely transferable skills, especially if you, if you work more on the administrative side, like for me working in hospitality, working front desk, I was able to have other administrative jobs on my resume um, as well. So I was able to go into the sales department. And also if you're into sales, if you go into sales, I actually have friends that were that co-workers that worked in the sales department that were sales managers. And now one of them, matter of fact, went to University of Houston for, you know, for hospitality, majored in it. She's a real estate agent now. So she's able and she used to sell hotels, that, that kind of property. Now she sells homes. So she's still working with people. She is still selling a property. It may not be a hotel necessarily, but it's a home. And so she's still in the hospitality industry, just in a different way or format. And now she's able to make however much money she wants unrestricted as a real estate agent. So there's definitely transferable skills. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you mentioned that too, because I say all the time, the most underrated skill in America is being able to deal with people face-to-face. -face. You ain't lying. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, and the degrees are important for certain areas, but these companies, yeah. whether it's a hospitality or not, want people that can deal with people face-to-face -face. It is uh, or, or on the phone. So it's just yep. so important to be able to communicate, even if you want to do hair. You know, I tell people all the time, mm. You got to be able to talk to somebody about their hair, how their hair is going to be done. You got to tell somebody how you're going to fix their car. So even if you're not going to be in a hospitality career, getting hospitality skills are invaluable in any area. Uh, I just got two more from the kids. Uh, this is Quinaja Walker, and this is and this and you can talk briefly about this, but this is a great question. She said, "What all roles have you had in the in, in this field?" Okay, yeah. So being a hostess, working at the restaurant. Um, greeting people, welcoming in them into the restaurant, seating them, also taking their or, their order. Um, I did it in the morning, so I was, you know, you like to have orange juice or coffee, <laughs> person. Um, if their if their kitchen is backed up, serving, you know, helping serve them, being the front desk agent, um, creating reservations, as well as you know, being the first and last impression of the hotel, which is very important. Um, because guests can go and do a survey and you are the last person there. If they come by the front desk to check out, you're the last staff that can catch them and capture them before they even do a survey and see what's going on. Um, being a front desk manager, managing a team of different people um, and different you know, generations as well. Uh, even having to work night audit. If somebody called in sick, I have to work the, over you know, the graveyard shift. Also being an assistant for the manager of operations, which was also kind of helping front desk as well. But, and then now um, being a sales coordinator. So when we have guests that are coming into our hotel, I am the person that is setting up their amenities. So you know how when you check into a hotel, sometimes there's a beautiful like fruit and cheese tray and wine and all that good stuff. I'm the person that, that looks at who our elite members are or what their preferences are for their snacks or their allergies or whatever the case may be and have that set up to welcome them in the hotel. So that's another behind the scenes thing. Um, creating, once again, creating reservations. And I'm, I'm always doing that. And also leads, that's another thing. So when we get leads coming into our hotel of different conventions or people wanting to host different events at the hotel, I'm the one that goes in and I filter out which sales manager get this lead based upon, you know, what their role is in the department. Will this go to my director of special events if it's a gala or, or a wedding? Or will this go to my director of catering and convention services? Like, hey, this is going to be um, a big event by Petco. They're coming in and they're going to do a conference here at our hotel. Or, you know, is it going to be a church, which will fall under my Smurf manager, which is um, social, military, education, religious, and fraternity. Will wow. that go to Will that go to her, or do I need to go higher and give this to my director of sales because this is a citywide event, such as you know um, Super Bowl or things of that nature, and they're going to handle it. And one thing that we've had recently in our property is we've had college football teams stay with us. Sometimes professional football teams stay with us. And once we get professional, like NFL teams staying with us, it's a higher level of security that we're going to have to make sure that all our I's are dotted, all our T's are crossed. 
yeah. to make sure that they are comfortable and feel secure staying. And we've had high profile guests, at least when you work in the luxury space, that's when you get more high profile guests. And also, even when I worked at Crown Plaza, I checked in a famous comedian. I also had an interaction with, uh, I don't know if you know the actress or the kids of the actress, Julia Roberts. Wow. Her brother, Eric Roberts, Emma Roberts' dad, Eric Roberts actually stayed at one of the hotels I worked at. Eric Roberts, her brother was born in Mississippi. Cool. Yep. Yeah. So, so yeah, so you can meet, you can meet celebrities. And also my mother, she met Maya Angelou, the famous poet Maya Angelou. Wow. She met her and she learned that she was allergic to strawberries because my mom, she worked in food and beverage side of things. So she knew that Maya Angelou was allergic to strawberries. So fun fact. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, there, there's. So you can you can meet you can meet celebrities. You never know. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. I just got one more from the students, and this is Jemiah Carson, and she asked, "Why should a student look into working in the hospitality industry?" I think that you should look into it because you are going. It's going to touch you in in your everyday life when you go to when you go to McDonald's, <laughs> McDonald's and Chick Fil A. We see the difference in their level of service sometimes. Um, even when you go into a restaurant, I think you, it, it shows compassion. You know, for, since my husband and I were in the industry, I'm compassionate when I see a waiter in the weeds, so to speak, like they got too many different tables and, and they're working and, and they're busting their butt trying to help us and, and serve us. I think it's important because you are serving people. And it is service. And you're going to really learn more about yourself. You're going to learn how to um, just be humble. You know, I've had guests, I've had guests who are that kind of mean to me because they 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 think that my job is mean, demeaning. We are serving you, but we're not your servants. <laughs> okay. Let's get that cleared up. But I think that it's important because it, it shows humility. You're working in the service industry. You understand how it is. You know what things to look for. You, It's going to be a part of your life. And also another thing, too, is that you don't necessarily have to work in the hospitality industry in order to be hospitable. Yeah. You can open a door for somebody. You can say please and thank you. You can, you know, next time you see your grandmother, fix her a plate of food from the kitchen, give her, you know, some iced tea or some water. There are some ways to be hospitable and you don't necessarily have to be in the industry. And I think that because I'm in the industry, I'm more kinder to people than I normally, than, than, I, than any other, than I normally may have would be. And I'll just say a funny story of how I literally got off from work and I guess I was still in work mode and I was leaving the bank and I held open a door for, for an old, a older woman. And she was like, um, hi, do you, do you work for the bank? I'm like, oh no, ma'am, I, I don't, I don't work here. I can't help you get a loan or nothing. I work at hotels. So I'm just used to open the doors for people. I still have my work mode on. Yeah, but, but that's, that's an excellent point because having those good hospitable customer service skills can transfer into any industry. Cause I always make a comment. I, I had a, a medical procedure a few years ago and the doctors, the nurses, the whole medical staff was the best customer service I've ever dealt with in my life. You'd have thought I was a hotel guest because it was, and it really added that experience. And I, and you know, whenever I need uh, to do something like that again, that's who I'm going to go to because they were so hospitable. So that is a great point. Now we're almost out of time and, and we thank you so much for joining us in, at fitness in today. Um, but before we go, um, you know, you're, a. Uh, not much older than them. You, you, you know, you're a young, uh, a young black female in the United States, mm -hmm. and you've done some incredible things already. So what can these young people do now that um, can follow in the footsteps of someone like you to, you know, I, th even though they're going to face those same obstacles? You know, I think that what you can do now is serving. That's the one thing that's been in my heart before we um, during the week, you know, before leading up to this, it's really serving, serving your way up to the top, you know, go out on the limb, that's where the fruit is, um, be, find a mentor, being able to, you know, volunteer and, and do certain stuff, if you have an interest in something, follow, you know, follow it, I feel like ideas are always floating around like beans, and they land on you, and you have to kind of do action. And if you don't, it'll just go and float away and land on somebody else. And sometimes we have ideas and we don't pursue it. And then somebody else do it. I'm like, I was going to invent that. 
they stole my idea. They didn't sell your idea. You didn't act on it. So one thing I really want to encourage is, you know, find a mentor, an area or something that you're interested in, and also be willing to serve saying, hey, you know, I, if you want to know guitar lessons, hey, is it possible I can do X, Y, and Z for you in exchange of guitar lessons? People love seeing younger folks being able to serve, volunteer, and give their time. Like, how can I help you? Not necessarily like, what can you do for me? But how can I help you? How can I serve you? And they really like that. And they want to go above and beyond because they see that out of you. That's awesome. Um, now, before we go, uh, first of all, tell us where to find you on Instagram. Yeah, so you can find me at Reimagine Hospitality. And you'll see me. <laughs> uh, great follow. And, and as always, we need to tell everybody, you know, they're young. Make sure you're tipping your servers and your, and your wait staff. Yeah. And everybody. So it's, you know, yes. That's how they, that's how they make their living. I'm actually, my, my husband gets on me because he feels like over, I over tip, but since my mom was a waitress as well as a bartender, she knew the importance of tipping and, you know, that tips was how she was able to make it home. It was either, do I take a taxi back home because she didn't have a car or do I take the bus? And, you know, tips was a great way for her to have means of transportation and have those options. Yeah. So it's just, it's important to know, to remember when those people are waiting your tables or pouring your drinks or parking your car or whatever, mm -hmm. they, are, they are depending on that, on that little extra money. So make sure um, you're always tipping your service staff, no matter where you are in the country. Cash is king. Also, if you decide to, you, they love cash, but also if you tip them on their, um, like on the credit card, that goes to their paycheck in the next two weeks. So just keep that in mind as well. And I'm yeah. not sure if that I've been, I've, I've, been able to tip, I've been able to tip on the app at hotels now. So just get you know, like, it's another thing, um, able to do that, able to do it electronically. So if you don't have cash, you can still help them out. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So Lauren Brown, Houston, Texas, Reimagine <laughs> Hospitality. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Talk to you soon.